Welcome to Money Making Conversation. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. Each Money Making Conversation talk show is about entrepreneurship and entertainment. I provide the consumer and business owner access to celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. I recognize that we all have different definitions of success. For some, it's a sizable paycheck. Mine is helping people wake up and inspiring them to accomplish their goals and living their very best, living the very best lives through their own personal passion. And that's what I'm going to do for you. I want you to stop tripping over small challenges and prepare to rise above the big obstacles that life is going to present to you. The Money Making Conversation and interviews provide relatable, informative information to my listeners about career and financial planning, entrepreneurship, motivation, leadership, overcoming the odds, and how to live a balanced life. My next guests, they are on the phone, uh, straight out of uh, Gary and Dana by way of Iowa. <laughs> They are childhood friends and enthusiastic consumers of coffee and tea. I'm going to tell you something, my, love, my wife would love y'all. She just loves her some tea, man. They are the co-founders of Black & Gold, the first black-owned nationally distributed coffee brand. It's challenging coffee kings like Starbucks and Pete's with a socially conscious business model aimed at supporting at-risk communities. They are selling coffee with a cause. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, co-founders, PJ Caesar and my man Rod Johnson. How you doing, team? Doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You guys are from Gary, Indiana, and uh, one of the big, uh, big celebrities out of Gary, Indiana is the family, it's the Jackson Five family, and of course Michael Jackson. Uh, tell us a little background of you guys because you're lifelong friends. I know your business is based out of out of Iowa, but tell us how it started and uh, the relationship that you guys built to take it to Iowa in Gary, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is Rod. Um, as you mentioned, we are born and raised in Gary, Indiana. Uh, we actually grew up uh, a rock's throw from each other uh, on the same block, uh, graduated from high school um, uh, right next uh, alongside to each other and part of ways um, to pursue our own collegiate careers, uh, myself going down to Indiana University. In right. And, and Hoosier, Pernell, right? Uh, to university. <laughs> yeah, Hoosier through and through. Mm -hmm. uh, and Cornell uh, uh, took a different route. Uh, to University of Northern Iowa, um, and which is you know kind of how we made that transition to uh, being headquartered and operated out of Iowa. Uh, from there, pursued careers um, uh, in nonprofit management uh, as well as retail merchandising, uh, respectively, and decided we wanted to leverage those skills that we had garnered over the last decade or so uh, into an entrepreneurial endeavor. Uh, it, it made sense to do something that we were familiar with, not necessarily from a, a, a scientific standpoint, but just as consumers, um, as you made reference to. Uh, and, and from there, Black and Bull was born. So, you know, just a real or organic uh, relationship uh, that, that turned into a, a, a business partnership. Well, the interesting thing about it, when, they, when, you, when people tell you when you invest in stock, in the stock market, they tell you to invest in something that you live. Like, for instance, if you... You know, you go into Home Depot all the time. You should invest in that. If you're going to consider a stock, consider a stock Home Depot. If you if you go to a tech shop, things like that. You eat at McDonald's. Consider McDonald's should be the stock that you consider as your favorite because that's what you're investing your time and your food in anyway. So that consider stock. So you guys are saying, hey, we we're big coffee drinkers, big tea drinkers. Why not make that part of the business plan, the business model? But it doesn't start as simple as that. Correct. Correct. Um, well, you know, that, that certainly played a major role into why we decided to pursue this. You know, just as consumers of those products, um, we, we had that familiarity. And, and given the uh, the mass consumption of it, um, there's some resonance with a much larger audience than, than just uh, than us two. So, um, yeah, so to your point about you know, pursuing uh, an opportunity where you have some familiarity, right. uh, that at least planted the seed for us to start Black and Bold. Right, you know, and now let's start with the name. Well, how did the name come about, Black and Bold? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's a it's a double entendre. Uh, you know, it uh, on the surface it, it represents the products that we offer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, black coffee, black yes, tea, bold yes, flavoring. Yes. Um, but also, it's a, a, a mantra, if you will, in the way that we govern our lives as um, mm -hmm. black entrepreneurs, as as black men in society. Mm -hmm. um, taking a very assertive and uh, assumptive role in, in, in every endeavor that we embark on, uh, embark upon. So, um, you know, there is embedded in that sort of a uh, uh, a call to action, if you will, as well as a description of 
uh, our full assortment of products. Really, uh, this cause I, I'm not a coffee drinker. That's not a negative. I'm just not a coffee drinker. My wife is a tremendous. <laughs> we we tre- won't hold that against you. Huh? No, thank you, thank you. Because you know I don't want to put anything negative about that. You know, my <laughs> wife is a tremendous tea tea person. Oh my goodness, she starts her day with tea. She walks around with tea. She takes the tea to the restaurant. She is a tea drinker. Okay, and so so you got you got you got you got both extremes here: a non coffee drinker and a super tea drinker. Now, when I when I when I when I talk about coffee, because I've seen stories on coffees, here, you know, they have different coffees from different parts of the world, and some people have climbed mountains in South America to get the right type of coffee, the, the texture, the flavor, it all makes a big difference. And how did you guys, you know, did you guys have a favorite coffee? Because you know, I know about, we all know about Starbucks and Peach and all that. Now we have Black and Bold. Oh, that. What were you guys drinking or what were you guys experiencing? Did y'all experiment with different types of brands prior to launching your brand, A Taste? Yep. This is TJ. I'll definitely jump in on this. Me being the um, equivalent of your wife's tea journey is how <laughs> I am when it comes to coffee. So uh-huh. I definitely pull right into the coffee side of this venture uh-huh. uh, from a consumer first standpoint. I don't, I, he hasn't really you know, bragged about his tea enthusiasm but okay so you so you're the coffee guy pj you the coffee guy you the coffee guy yes sir okay and rod you the tea guy yes yeah you can put it that way (laughs) okay okay. so that's the perfect relationship because you know you focus on your strength so now pj you were talking about the coffee because you know I, you know, I have a friend on it. You know, I manage Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey's a coffee fanatic. You know, he had to get his coffee on, you know. And there's a lot. Of, and like I said, nothing was wrong with that. It was just the fact that he wanted his coffee and he had it have it a certain way. And he was happy once he got it in his hands, you know. And there's a lot of famous and everyday people mm-hmm. who consume coffee the same way. How do you consume coffee? What drives you to have a good cup of coffee? Man, that has evolved so much from my introduction into coffee. And so... I, I really started drinking coffee when I started my professional career, and I was, you know, this this young buck, first time career, or what you call it, first generation corporate career person, and uh, was introduced to coffee. The caffeine hit, and that was just a matter of, <laughs> like, all right, this is how I'm going to fuel my own, you know, predetermined success right, on right. a day to day basis. And right. so, at the time, I mean, it was. You, you can hand me a sugar down latte, and that was good enough as long as it had some caffeine in it. Right, right. But along this journey career-wise and uh, the discovery of, you know, what makes a good cup of coffee was really just the volume of coffee consumed and also with the different coffee shops experienced. And, um, you know, Rod and I both spend quite a bit of our time traveling within our, 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 our careers and spending so much time in coffee shops, you learn that there's, like fresh roasted coffee, just by default, tastes different. But unless you're going to a coffee shop that right. you're getting that fresh cup of coffee, you don't really realize that. Where you know the the you know, my grandmother drank Folgers every every morning. That's night and day. That was my dad. That, that was my dad. That was my dad. I, I always tell people at night. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I always tell people. I, I try to correlate this to the, to things that people do consume a lot of. Right. So you think about wine. Right. And so. I always tell people, if you're not drinking bottom shelf wine, you shouldn't be drinking bottom shelf coffee because it's a delicacy of the, the, the product that you're drinking that actually has flavor within it. And the fresher it is, the more you taste that original flavor. It's all coffee-based, don't get me wrong. But the actual like delicacy, the, the, the distinctness that comes with you know, the means to the end result, mm. uh, it, it, it definitely, there's definitely levels to it. And so the, the more we, we have access to and the more consumed, the more we appreciate it. What good coffee is, um, and for me, it's it's black coffee, light, medium, or dark roast because I just appreciate fresh roasted black coffee. But um, there's a whole different spectrum for people from thinking about coffee just from how do I get my caffeine to how do I enjoy this, you know, kind of mature my experience in this product and get my caffeine at the same time. Yeah, here's the interesting thing about it. When you started talking, I could almost... Uh, images came about uh, in my in my mind about you know you're you're so passionate and I can I can almost smell the the conversation the, the aroma you know because that's like a good piece of steak to me you know they say you bring the, you know you know you go to certain quality steakhouses they bring the meat out to you and let you see it they say which one do you want and that's what you're saying here a coffee is not all coffee is the same the aroma the taste 
how, 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 how it comes up to your nose when you're about to drink it. All that plays into the whole process of a good cup of coffee. Now, you're saying when you start out, you just drink. So a lot of people just drinking coffee. Like I said, my dad was a Folgers guy. You know, I could just see that coffee pot on my mom. It was it was a timer that went off. He put the he put that little uh, th- that little it was like a little uh, strainer. It was a little white strainer. He put the coffee granules mm-hmm. in there, and then they poured the water through, and then all of a sudden that was his coffee. He was happy, and so but today it's like a whole science to it. And just to hear you talk about it, PJ was like. It was like a. It was like. See, I'm big on desserts. It was like me eating a nice piece of German chocolate cake. The way you was talking, man, you was you was you was passionate about that cup of coffee, man. I was like, man, he's serious, ain't he? <laughs> okay, you, you just put a whole another taste in my mouth talking about German chocolate cake. Come on, man, you talk, come come on now. some coffee uh, 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 that, 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 put that to the top of the list right there. Well, you know, because you know, I think that when I when I when I, when I heard y'all's story, you know, in the in the whole aspect of you know. You, you left a full time job to do this, you know. You guys weren't like, you know, uh, you know, no, you're novices. You know, you you wanted to do it. You were passionate about teas and coffees. It's a part of your lifestyle. But you jumped out there. Now I want to switch over to my tea man right now because I heard the I heard the the, the the coffee story from PJ. Now, Rod, tell me your tea story, your tea journey. Yeah, so very similar. Uh, yeah, very similar to P. Just had a, a real appreciation for it, not necessarily from a productivity standpoint, um, but actually the exact opposite to have relax at the end of the day. Um, and that was a habit that I picked up growing up, watching my mom and, and my my grandparents drink uh, a variety of teas for a variety of reasons. And right. I think that's why I really uh, gravitated more so. To tea as opposed to coffee because of the the different benefits. Right, like green tea has uh, you know health uh, impl- or not implications but benefits as opposed to the the health benefits that comes with a black tea or an herbal tea. And so just just having a cup of tea to end my day after ripping and running and and, and trying to uh, you know be successful along the way, um, it, it just made sense to incorporate that as a part of my my end of the day ritual. So. Um, you, and you made a point earlier how complementary uh, our tastes are or, or preferences are. Uh, it, it just really made sense for us to, to make that into a business. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and I'm proud of you guys for, for, for trusting your natural instinct because that's a plus. But, you know, here's a guy, you know, I'm from, I'm from Houston, Texas, big barbecue country. OK, so you go into a barbecue joint, mm-hmm. you know, free tea. Sugar, un- they come to your table. Sweet and unsweetened. Big old, they give you as much tea as you want. <laughs> Big old jug of tea just sitting over there. What you want, sir? Sweet and unsweetened. <laughs> so that's my introduction to tea. <laughs> big old, big old jug of tea just brought to your table. Kind of look a little <laughs> light brownish. You know what I'm saying? And they just, mm-hmm. they, somebody mm-hmm. just throw a lemon in there. And throw some sugar in there, and they they rocking and rolling. Now my wife, she look at that, she's disgusted. <laughs> that's that's horrible. <laughs> see, 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 Rob. I'm pretty sure you. She's just like you. What's that over there? I would never drink that. That's horrific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she walks well, around. Know, I can I can appreciate a good cup of sweet tea from the south. I guess <laughs> oh, and I'm not as uh, I don't draw that hard of a line. And I, I can get it why you know why you want one of those big uh, those cups of those cups of tea from the south. Oh my goodness! Okay, I'm enjoying myself. We're gonna go to our break here. Uh, with, I'm talking to my man PJ and Rod, black and bold. Based in Des Moines, Iowa, straight out of Gary, Indiana, a Hoosier. I'm going to tell you, I, I've been down to Indiana. That's a great pizza place down there where I used to do stand-up comedy. He knows what I'm talking about. We'll be back with more money-making conversation. Black and bold, coffee and tea. Sound like a movie. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald, and you're listening to a money-making conversation. Uh, thoroughly, I'm awoke. I'm awake. Is that I'm awake or woke? What is it? Uh, I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm woke. I'm woke. Okay, let's give me terminology right, you know, because I got a coffee drinker here and I got a tea man here. My wife used the tea to wake up. I tell you something. It's funny when I tease her a lot about her tea because, you know, if she go, if she doesn't get the tea, she's not a nice person that day. She, she, she's fussy. <laughs> she's really fussy. Rod, she's fussy. And, and, I, and I always tell her, I said, look, you got it, got I it. said, would you go get your tea 
and get out of get it. Just get on out of my face right now. Get get that tea so you can become normal again. Become normal again. <laughs> you know, she's straight out of Belize, Rod. You know, uh, I met her. You know, I didn't know she was hooked on tea. <laughs> I, I thought that was just some mild little drink she was drinking. Now, thirty years later. My wife is addicted to tea. <laughs> she she cannot live without it, and I'm happy for her. But I've learned that in her in her in, in in drinking something that you enjoy, and that's what this is all about: enjoy, relaxing. Because I heard PJ say that it relaxed me, it gave me a a sense of comfort. So, what is the strong selling point of your product, Black and Bold? Sure, um, you know, please feel free free to jump in, but. Um, I, I would say from the, the tea standpoint, um, you know, offering the, the organic loose leaf tea uh, yes, really does provide for a different experience as opposed to the, the prepackaged tea sachets that uh, most people are accustomed to. It really does lend itself to uh, having a much more robust experience when you're taking that sip of, of tea. You, you, it's a much more flavorful um, right. experience. And so being very intentional about having that those loose leaf options and a variety of assortments mm-hmm. uh, was very intentional. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same kind of goes with coffee. It's, it's a much more scientific aspect to it, uh, considering that it's specialty coffee. Uh, and, and I'll kick it over to Pete to kind of fill in the blanks on that. Yeah, because he's a different cat. Now, see, you you a little more easy going with the tea. I have a nice little sweet tea every once in a while. See, I didn't think... See, PJ wouldn't respond like that. He has to have his coffee, coffee a certain way. P, you, 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 know, you, 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 you're, you're a little bit more passionate about that. Because when, cause when Rod said that, I went, see, I'm gonna tell you, I got to keep bringing up my wife because she's a tea drinker. She go to a restaurant, bring me hot water. She bring her tea with her. She brings her tea with her. Okay. That's her. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's her. So mm-hmm. so I got to get you guys break because I got to I got to introduce her brand to because if you yeah because I'd love for her to start making you guys rich because she buy tea <laughs> she, she buy her some tea brother I know that's right <laughs> so so I got to get I got to go we, online we appreciate that endorsement I, I got to I got to and so I'm just I'm, I'm gonna slide over to PJ the the coffee the passionate man because his tone and conversation with his coffee was a little bit different than Rod. Rod was a little, you know, he, he was much more professional. The, but the passion, I mean, see, see, something about coffee drinkers anyway, coffee drinkers are a little bit crazy about their coffee. You know, <laughs> they got to have it a certain way. That's and we'll be right. offended. We'll be offended if you put a bad gl- cup of coffee in front of them and call it a good cup of coffee. Am I hitting you, PJ? Am I hitting you right? He just laughed. You know what? He just laughed. I'm, I'm, I'm just fairly like... lenient with my consumption on what I drink. I'm fairly lenient. Like I said, I've been across the spectrum, but I do enjoy educating people on <laughs> that there's more to coffee than where they know. Right? Yes, sir. So at least they know that there is better out there, or yes, at least sir. the potential for better out there. Yes, sir. So don't don't get me wrong. I, I still focus on the end to a means, which is caffeine, but it definitely hit different when we roast our own yes, sir. and we can educate people on, on the why of doing that. Right. So from a, from a, you know, what makes our product different again, starting from, from the beginning is we, we are a roastery. We roast on like green coffee, so yeah. pre-roasted coffee all the way to a finished good. And mm-hmm. that's where coffee is going to have its best taste profile. So when you think about mm-hmm. people correlate, warm coffee to bad coffee right. or room temp coffee, lukewarm coffee to bad coffee because it tastes, it tastes bitter. Right? right. And that's because it's flat, stale, older coffee. It's mm-hmm. not fresh. If it's fresh, you actually taste more of its flavor notes mm-hmm. that come from these coffee beans. Mm-hmm. A lot of people also don't know that a coffee bean is the pit of a cherry. Mm-hmm. Right? And so you think about the cherries we eat, we throw those pits away. Nobody's trying to choke on a pit. Right? <laughs> right, but right, right, in right. these coffee growing regions, uh, where, you know, these farmers are planting these plants. They're also planting other crops, right. whether it's the blackberries, whether it's blueberries, so on and so forth. And those coffee beans are absorbing those notes. And so when you have this cup of coffee, it's not a um, an additive that you should be tasting on your black cup of coffee. It should also, it should be these subtle notes that actually make it feel distinct. And so that's, 
in a, in a mainstream coffee standpoint, you don't really get to taste that on an everyday basis unless you know that that exists to then expect it more out of things. So um, that's one of the things that definitely come through with our coffee options. Again, we provide light roast, medium roast, and dark roast. So mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. get your fix from the options we have. But given that it's fresh, you actually taste more of the quality within it. And that, that by default, is a big point of difference. Uh, for the everyday coffee customer. Yes. There's way more nuances that you <laughs> could get into. Yes, We're not going to distract too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but because your this, conversation yeah, way so longer on than the, Rob. On the surface level, we definitely, yeah. Your conversation way longer than Rob. You know, you just roasted different types. You know, you got a cherry. You know, you most people throw away the cherry. You know, you be plants, <laughs> other plants around here. You come over, you get the medium, light, and dark roasted. So you, I just can tell, the, 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 Rob, does he get on your nerve talking about coffee? Does he? Does he? Because you do hear that conversation over there, man. <laughs> your, little, your little quick conversation about, about I'm, no, just, I'm not trying to pitch you guys against each other, but I'm just Tell you something, Rod. You gotta get your your your, your tea conversation up. You gotta upgrade your tea conversation, brother. Yeah. Cause you just heard PJ. PJ was over there, man. I was I was talking to a scientist. I was talking to a scientist over there, a farmer. I was talking to a oh, world man. traveler. I, this guy ain't from Des Moines or Gary, Indiana. He from Brazil. That's what I was talking about. He's climbing the mountains, you know, with a backpack, you know, with some dogs and some mules. Talking about we got to go get the finest. He's, he's sticking his hand in the ground and pulling the seeds up. Go, this is the soil I want my coffee to come from. Uh, you know what's funny about that is that's how he is about everything, right? So we, we like I said, we grew up together, and you kind of get used to it after a while. After twenty something years, you just go, that's TJ. That's, that's, that's how we rock with our face. I love uh, it. I love it. But you know, the, the, the beauty of y'all relationship, I, I'm enjoying myself because I respect, you know, anybody who steps out and trusts their instincts and have a plan because that's what money making conversation is about. Individuals who trust, put the right people around them, and then put a product out there, and deeper people react to the product. Not only when they react to the product, you have the product available when they react. Because a lot of people got stuff out there. They put it out there, clear off the shelves. Okay, where's the, where's the second, third, fourth round? Oh, uh, we got we to raise some more money. We, gotta, uh, we didn't know we are going to sell that fast. So when I think about what you guys are doing, I commend Black and Bold. Now, how do we get your product? I hear, uh, it's in Target, right? It's in What stores is it available in? So we can start talking about that. Yeah, so uh, as you open the show with, we are uh, nationally accessible uh, via our retail partnership with Target. Uh, and it's available in select stores. Um, you can check either Target.com or our, our website to see if there's one uh, specific to you. Uh, and if not, it's available online in a couple of places. Again, those two those two websites as well as Amazon.com as well. Now, one of these, there's, there's always an angle, and I said something in my intro, coffee with a cause. Why is the whole social impact? Because you can just go out there and make some money and and go and sleep well at night and but you making a, a 5% of your of, of, of revenue goes to the, the causes. Why is that important to the Black and Bold brand or to you, Rod, or to you, PJ? Sure. So, uh, yeah, 5% of our profits are contributed to initiatives and, and nonprofits that uh, support at-risk youth. Uh, and we were very deliberate in selecting that demographic because it's a vulnerable community. Um, growing up in Gary, Indiana, we may have been considered um, at risk youth. And so we ultimately identify with um, those who are in need of resources to ultimately live their best lives. Uh, and what better way to do that than to incorporate it and into our business model um, so that it gives the everyday consumer the, the opportunity to participate in that process as well. Um, you know, many companies have, social impact uh, as a part of of what they do, you know, prioritizing purpose and profit, but it's not particular to those communities that, uh, like I said, we most closely identify with. So uh, as we were deciding what does this entrepreneur, what does entrepreneurship look like for us, um, we wanted to make sure that we brought them uh, along for the journey as well. Yeah, because I'm reading here says. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I add a little bit on. I'll add a little bit on to that. Rock, Rock kind of nailed that one. Uh, hit that one out the park. But the uh, being heavy coffee, being heavy tea consumers, as we talked about entrepreneurship and you know what does success look like and who do we give back to and when do we give back. 
uh, going down our co- corporate career ladders is like, okay, well, we'll be able to, you know, close to retirement and X, Y, Z money, then we can start making an impact. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's not the case. We, we can actually focus on how do we make this impact sooner, especially to the communities that we relate to, right. especially in industries that we're spending all this money in. And it came back to my tea consumption and my coffee consumption. We were having these conversations over a cup of coffee and tea in different coffee shops. And it's like, yo, what? As much money as we put into this, right. where's the representation? Where's the engagement? Where's the impact? And we didn't see it. And so it really just manifested itself in the coffee and tea, one, from our consumerism, but two, just the lack of impact. As large as, I mean, coffee is the second highest consumed, consumed beverage in America behind water. Right? Yes, it is. And where's the domestic impact for people in our community? And so just by default of that, it, it, it naturally aligns to us as entrepreneurs, which helps fuel our energy, helps fuel our passion to continue down this journey and, and, and to try to slay these big dragons. Well, they're big, and they're big because you care. And that's what, uh, you know, I look at my life and, and the journey, and it, it, well, it is a continual journey. I, and it's about who, who do I help, you know, because I, I didn't get here by myself. And, you know, you two guys didn't get out of Gary, Indiana by yourselves. It was the people who saw and pushed you and, mm-hmm. and saw bigger values and opportunities for you. And, and you had a unique talent that they saw. And, they, and it might have been just one teacher. It might have been just one friend. It might have been a minister. It might have been somebody in the neighborhood that went, you, you're better. You're bigger. Don't settle. And you guys don't settle. And that's why throughout my, my interview with you guys, I tease you and we were joking around. But there's 100% respect here because you're not settlers. And then... On top of that, you still remember, you know, like you used an example. People might have thought that we were downtrodden, that we were uh, out of Gary, out of the community where, you know, values for success are limited and people are only going to settle because they want to be on Section 8 because everybody describes a community that they don't live in based on what they hear or what they see on CNN or what they see on Fox mm-hmm. or what they read in one article, you know, mm-hmm. like everybody in Flint, Michigan is drinking bad water, you know, because that's what they read. That's what they think. But the thing that I'm just trying to tell you two guys is that I brought you on my show was to say thank you. And uh, Black and Bold is just an avenue for change. Yes, you were doing the coffee thing, PJ. Yes, you're doing the tea thing, Rod, but you're doing a bigger thing. You're changing lives and you're moving forward and you're aggressively trying to tell people that they can be, that they are special despite the differences, despite their color, despite the naysayers, despite people telling them they can't, they can't make it because the environment that they're growing up in or they're living in. Is that, is that the, is that the ultimate goal? I know coffee and tea is the business, but uh, you guys can answer separately. Uh, Rod, what is the ultimate goal when I make a statement like that to the both of you? I mean, you you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that that's exactly our reason for being. That that's the, the ethos of what we do is to resource communities that are talented but may not have visibility to pathways of uh, to success. Um, and so again, like I, like I said, bringing them along for the journey is, is something that's intentional because. We, we resonate with them. We see them. We want them to know that, that they're heard um, because we were once in that position. So just, just reaching back um, and, and not forgetting about where you come from, about those people who um, uh, have similar journeys and similar struggles and, and overcoming obstacles as you um, is something that regardless of the endeavor, I think we, I speak for us both, is, is going to be a part of, of, of what we do. It's, it's impossible to, for it not to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it over to PJ, the, the talker. You know, he's going he gonna to go a little deeper. He might even open up the Bible on this one, you know, because he, he over there. He, I shouldn't let him go. I shouldn't let him. I'm going to tell you something, Rod. Next time we interview, I'm going to let you go last because, you know, it gives him time to think. He gets to he gets to hear what you left out, you know, and expound on some stuff. He gets to piggyback on your thought and make it his thought and all that stuff. So we're going to let PJ, the talker, straight out of the morning hour, you know, by way of Gary in I'm going to call him the headliner for this show. Headliner, PJ. Oh, black and bold. Consumer. You're to me, man. Coffee, man. The talker. Yeah, so... 
You know what? Yeah, it's 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 this one is this one is mm. as Rod said, you hit the nail on the head. Rod did as well. For me, when I talk to youth, I uh, always tell them I didn't realize how low expectations I had of myself until I realized how low expectations society had for me. And once I realized that, you know, the door is wide open on continuing to discover in order to decide, you know, what to do with that new discovery. And can you be successful? Did that put you on a path to impact more people? And representation for me has been huge in seeing other people that I can relate to, other black people in particular, black men in particular, um, in paths of success for me to study and learn from them as well. And it doesn't have to be direct connection, but just to be, to be a sponge from that. And so uh, we, we have two purposes for us to continue to discover what success means for us in order to, to win on the paths and the, hopefully the path continue to become wider right. for what we're, what we're venturing down, but also for true representation for our youth, for our fellow black entrepreneur peers, um, for pe- black people in coffee, for uh, you know, the whole gambit, just in the sense of what representation, especially new representation in spaces we don't really occupy often, can really mean to our culture, to our commerce, uh, our youth, all of the above. And so, um, you know, we have a huge responsibility um, that we're, we're fortunately passionate about, but very, very confident that we can continue to forge this path to, to help uh, enlighten more of our people on, on pursuing things that they are just naturally curious in, even though they may not see, you know, that the, the door is already wide open. Wow. They, they can be those people to open that door. That's my man, PJ Rod, uh, the co-founders of uh, Black and Bold. Uh, you can find the product online at Black, B-L-K, and Bold. It's in 350 or more Target stores as well as online at Target stores. If you want to hear more Money Making Conversation interviews, go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald.